Hello, class. Welcome to week seven, if you can believe it. We're in week seven of composition two. And when you log into Blackboard, you will first notice that I have adjusted our schedule, uh, not schedule, just the order. So I have it. So we're last week and then this week, I've moved everything else all the way down to the bottom. So if you do need to access anything from here, you can do that. There are some of you missing assignments. So I definitely encourage you to go and look at what you're missing to make sure uh, you know what you're missing. You can go to, I believe it's grades in here somewhere. Here it is. You would click on this and it would take you to the grades. Anything with a dash dash or a zero means I did not receive it. Um, I only give zeros if it was never turned in. Everything else will have a grade. So if you receive something that is less than full credit, it means that you should have some comments on it. If you receive full credit, um, discussion boards and summaries, you'll receive credit for doing those. Uh, there usually won't be comments. I will tell you if there are comments um, in, in an email or at this video. Um, and if you have a zero, it means I did not see it. If there's an opportunity or a case where um, you did turn something in and I gave you a zero, just send me an email. Uh, sometimes I just mistype and I hit, you know, I think I hit the full points and I don't end up hitting everything and I just hit the zero by mistake. So just uh, email me and I will fix it very quickly and everything will be all right. Uh, sometimes I make mistakes. I'm sorry about that. So week seven, we are coming into March, if you can believe that. This week, we are doing three main things. We are reflecting on the book review uh, peer review. So you'll have feedback from me and your classmates. I have put together uh, videos of me going over your papers through Turnitin. So I sent those all to you by email, so please check your email. You will also see feedback through the form of comments in your uh, Turnitin draft. So please let me know if you have questions. I'm always happy to help with you. Overall, um, book reviews are pretty good. They're exactly where I expect the drafts to be. Um, none of you have written a book review be before, so it's difficult. Um, you're going to be put in new writing situations all the time, and sometimes you just have to try and not do that great and then try again. And that's why we, we draft and why we write. Um, we have readers that give us feedback, and that's what we've done. So now we know what we can do. Uh, the biggest thing is making sure that your view, your opinion about the book is up front and center on this book report. Is it a good book? Is it worth reading? And why? What do you think makes it worth reading? We need to know that right away. We should be able to pick up this paper without knowing that it's a book review and read those first couple paragraphs and say, oh, this is a review of the book. I want to read more. So and we read through it and we understand exactly the way you feel about it and why you feel that way. That's what's more important than providing a detailed summary. The summary is there so you have uh, ways you can support it and describe what's going well. So maybe you want to talk about, you know, the the scene where they get the jeep uh, what does that do to contribute to the overall feeling of reading the book the overall uh, criticism you have of the book is it negative is, you know does it take away from the seriousness or does it show what this book is really about which is how uh, takai was able to you know experience childhood a little bit differently in these internment camps but at the same time he had to learn about it, even though he was experiencing it because he was a child and his parents did a fantastic job of protecting him from all these harsh realities. Is that what you want to say? So a lot of stuff to think about with the book review reflection. We are reading two things. First, we are reading Dana Boyd's Why America is Self-Segregating. I think I mess up the title sometimes. Why is America Self-Segregating um, is the question that Dana Boyd is asking. So you'll read this article which is just down here. You'll take this, um, I always open a new tab. We have a summary due and the discussion board that will be due Sunday. This is an interesting essay. Um, it talks about zero sum thinking, which is a little bit in connection to how we looked at the Sean Blanda piece from earlier. So all these essays kind of build on each other, talk about similar things, because I think it's important for us to can always consider different viewpoints in order to uh, think better, I guess is the best way to say that. So we have our summary due. If we look at 
get this. I don't know if that comes up for you or not, but I get a little toolbar that comes up. So why is America self-segregating? Why America is self -tech. So it's a fairly long essay. It's old, but still uh, relevant. Uh, July 2017. So some of the things you can think about, my kid wants Pokemon cards, sorry. Um, one of the things that, you probably didn't see that, one of the things that we can think about, and I didn't ask about this, but think about current events. Um, with everything that's going on in Ukraine, some people are saying we shouldn't do anything, some people say we should. So think about the self-segregation, um, but also uh, diversity, politics, and can we force change and all these interesting, interesting questions. How does America work around the world? Then we have in our critical thinking handbook, you'll read section four on logic and logical fallacies. So when you open this up, you have to scroll all the way down to section four. There is a story that goes along with it. You can read it if you want, but you don't have to. But this whole section on logic and logical fallacies, starting on page 22, um, is pretty relevant. It has a list of different fallacies, uh, which is great. So look at this. And then there's a fallacy chart, which is kind of good too, that'll help you out. And then discussion board. Uh, what do you think about logical fallacies? Do you see fallacies in the arguments surrounding your topic? Why are we using fallacies? Uh, think back to the banned topics that I had and how many of those arguments that we make about these banned topics um, are fallacies, such as uh, some of you wanted to talk about the drinking age and, and related it to uh, serving and more. What does drinking beer have to do with freedom or uh, drinking a beer have to do with fighting for your country? Those are different things. We can see a connection, but it's not quite the same thing. Similarly, uh, we could look at um, you know, people want to talk about gay marriage as a topic and they go into slippery slope arguments of, you know, if we uh, allow gay marriage, then this happens and this happens and this happens and pretty soon all society's gone or whatever. And it usually it ends with some sort of end of the world scenario, but that's a slippery slope. So you'll read about that. Um, they're very, very interesting arguments uh, because they always make sense, but when you think of them a little more deeply, they don't. Um, and then finally, we have our editorial analysis. Hopefully, I've been filling you in on this. We're writing a 570 word analysis of two editorials. We're comparing and contrasting them. And so I have the instructions here. And then you can go either to um, SRS Researcher or Opposing Viewpoints, uh, ProCon.org, something like that, and pick two sides uh, arguing opposite positions on your topic or as close to your topic as you can get. So uh, if you have trouble finding articles, please email me early this week so I can help you out. Otherwise, that is where we are for this week. And I hope everything goes well and you have a good week. We are almost ready for spring break. If you pull up our course schedule, you'll see spring break happens March 14th through the 20th. So it's coming up, our book review will be due. We'll have another journal, but we're gonna really start working on this paper, this big project. So editorial analysis is kind of like our last time to say, okay, is this a good topic or do I need to change? So that is where we are. Please uh, have a good week. Let me know if you have questions and I will hopefully hear back from you soon.